So if you've ever looked at the front of a camera lens, you've probably seen these cool reflections on the front of whatever lights there are in the room. You can see those reflected on the front of the lens. Now, while these mostly just look cool, uh, they're actually pretty useful as well. For example, here people are figuring out the lens design of a lens based on only the reflection of lights in it. Additionally, um, if you have a broken lens with optical problems, you can uh, help troubleshoot those problems using these flares. One way of doing this is simply taking your lens and spinning it very nicely along its axis. Um, the best way to, I've found to do this is to get two books or something like that and uh, press your lens up against them and rotate them and it should spin uh, pretty nicely around its center. In a normal lens, uh, if you have your lights really steady and you keep your eyes really still, uh, or your head really still rather, as you spin the lens, the lens flares that you see reflected off the lens shouldn't change at all. You should just see those in the same exact position no matter as you rotate the lens. And this makes sense, because all the optics in a lens are symmetric around the center of the lens. However, if you have an element knocked out of place, or tilted, or something like that, if you look really carefully as you rotate the lens, you can see a little flare of light belonging to the out-of-place element orbit around as you spin the lens. And that brings us to this lens, the uh, a Canon 28-135 F35-56. Unfortunately, this lens, uh, when I first got it, had very, very poor image quality, and I wasn't sure what was wrong with it. So first, I just decided to disassemble it and uh, see if there was anything obviously wrong with it. So on my first disassembly, I found that a little brush used to encode the zoom position of the lens was bent out of place. And upon finding this bent brush, I incorrectly assumed that it was the source of not only some electronic errors that occurred when the lens was attached to a camera body, but also the poor image quality. And when I put it back together, the errors disappeared on the camera, but the image quality of the lens was unchanged. So then I disassembled it again. All I really found this time was some things felt a little loose, I guess, but nothing uh, really that major. It was at this point that I thought of doing this rotation trick. And sure enough, there was a little light orbiting around. So at this point, I was like, hey, <laughs> clearly there's an element out of place. So now I need to look for crooked elements as I take it apart. So on my third disassembly, I took it apart this time stripping it completely down to uh, uh, until I could see almost all the elements separate without hurting anything. And sure enough, after poking around a little bit, I found this element that was a little bit crooked. And all it took was just pressing it back in. It popped back into place, reassembled it. Lens looked pretty good. You can see the test charts from before and after I fixed it. And before I fixed it, it was very, very blurry. And after I fixed it, it's actually a fairly sharp lens, um, even in the corners. And at 135 millimeters as well, the center got very sharp. And the edges uh, went from really blurry to all right. And I was able to fix this lens just in time to take some nice pictures at a climbing trip in Red Rocks, Nevada.